are listening to episode 227 of My Life Radio. I'm your host, Matt Blackburn, and today I'm speaking with Adam Bergstrom. I've had a lot of great conversations with Adam, but I can't believe we haven't talked about color yet, especially with how well-versed he is on the subject. So the topic of this show is color therapy. He talks about the connections between different colors and traumas, what is the birth control color, and then on the flip side, what color should you utilize if you want to create a child. He shares his favorite light therapy device, when to use different colors to stimulate minerals in the body, his thoughts on aura photography, what it means when two people wear the same colors unknowingly, which colors to wear on different days of the week. And if you don't have the color, is it better to go with an earlier or later color? His thoughts on artificial blue light exposure, what color makes you the strongest, which color helps with migraines, and a lot more. So enjoy the show. Here is Adam Bergstrom. Okay, Adam Bergstrom, welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a while. Uh, I recently moved down to California, so that was a whole uh, several month long process getting ready for that and stuff. But uh, how have you been? Good, good. You know, uh, talk about <laughs> magical thinking, but Barbara and Gal and I felt sorry for the farmers so we did something called the elemental song to be rain it's raining today here it's raining i mean i mean it hasn't stopped raining since we did it the first day we got a thunderstorm so whether you know uh uh it doesn't uh what do they say uh uh coincidence doesn't prove causation but it's an interesting coincidence <laughs> that's incredible i heard like the governor gavin newsom like flushes flushes the water if we get heavy rain he just flushes it into the ocean have you heard about that oh it, you know there are so many ways there is no drought it, they just pours it pour it into the ocean there are so many ways to save water here in montecito they would have tanks holding tanks all kinds of things like that those are gone plus i don't know if you've heard of primary water mm-hmm. water from magma it's distilled water comes out in springs and the one the the man who discovered it is in ojai california right here used to drill in he'd go to the middle east in the middle of israel or middle east and find a spring there's unlimited water below the ground created it's created by magma under the ground to get to the sky the sky is secondary water (laughs) wow so yeah, where where I move, there's a lot of people that drill wells out here, um, like East East San Diego. And is is that is it just a matter of picking the right pocket or just getting lucky? Like certain pockets where you drill into, you'll hit primary water. Or? Yeah, if you get distilled water, you're getting primary water because wow. the other one has minerals in it that have leached through the ground. But primary wow. water is directly created by created by magma and then coming up in these wells and there's ways to find it and this this one gentleman had a uh, student who was hungarian who did it for years they're both on cosmic vacation now but they were the experts in fact before hoover built hoover dam uh which was named after him he hired this guy to get water primary water which fed las vegas from primary water before they ever built the dam hoover knew all about primary water and it's been forgotten now because it would solve the drought process wow and and, and speaking of color um does is it true that light uh, that, that water prefers to be in the dark because i've heard that it's like kind of like wine it likes to be cold and in the dark or you know, it, it affects uh, light affects it dramatically, as Gilbert Ling pointed out. And uh, both ultraviolet and white, you you can sanitize water with it, and you can energize it. And there's a lot of diets where you put water in red jars, 
orange jars, yellow jars, etc. And then you drink those waters. And color is so powerful that a horticulturist named Antonius, I believe his name was, at Kentucky State University, he experimented with color in vegetables. And by putting tarps underground, now this is underground in the dark, a blue tarp, a green tarp, or whatever, he would get def- different food chemistry in the same food and different tastes out of the same food. Blue and green would be a tremendous difference in what a vegetable tasted like, which of course is not our standard physiology or chemistry, but he proved it. And on Facebook one time when I wrote that, uh, someone said, I studied with the guy. Yeah, it's for real. <laughs> wow. So are the, is the color like for the sheets themselves emitting frequencies or how do you think somehow that? It, it's wow. not supposed to work in the dark? You know, <laughs> we're not supposed to have that kind of force in the soil, much less our eyes. But color apparently does affect you. You can prove it by muscle testing to see if a color will do it in the dark. Um, mostly the light, we get brighter reactions to it. And in various color tests, like the looser color tests, the intensity of the color will change the color. So the more brightness you get, you actually get different colors. They don't tell you about that either. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you, you were actually my biggest inspiration to get uh, more color in my life, especially with my clothing. Um, I grew up wearing a lot of just plain, you know, black or gray or whatever <laughs> clothing. And now when I go out, I'll, I'll look at people and see what most people are wearing. And uh, it, it's not that colorful. It's kind of basic colors. And then so I've been playing around with like, you know, pink pants or red pants or <laughs> different colors. And it does kind of it, it changes the way I feel. It's pretty interesting. It, in my book, Color Recycling, I go into rather than the color therapy colored as trauma because mm. When we have a trauma, it prints in the color. And so you can work backwards with that. So, for instance, if a woman wants to have a child, but their unconscious doesn't want them to do that, maybe they figure the guy they're with is not the highest choice, whatever reason it is, some familial thing, they'll pick gray, which is a birth control color. Green is the way to have a child. And strangely enough, Having sex, wearing green at three to five o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday will almost guarantee a childbirth. Wow. But I tell people this can be dangerous because if they're not meant to have it in this in the sense of their trauma, they could have a stillbirth, which has happened to me. So I always tell people I'm handling you a gun here, you know, <laughs> don't turn it on yourself and shoot yourself. And people will say, oh, no, we're we're destined to have a child. And I just shake my head. I, I warned you, you know, <laughs> yeah, before you do this, make sure you get everything clear. And for instance, one way to tell other than mind hacking, which is my system of doing it, but even simple muscle testing. Do I need a child now? If it's weak, mm-hmm. psychologically, you're not ready. So you better figure out why that muscle is weak before you have a child. Wow. Yeah. I remember in one of our previous shows, you were talking about how uh, pink is a weakening color. Like, did they use that in certain prisons? Well, see, it's it's used. Here's the humor of it. And you can even find videos misinterpreted it on, uh, on YouTube to this day. Pink, if you use it for 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the most. It's very weakening. They had a show called That's Incredible on television years ago, and they exposed a sheriff's deputy, a bodybuilder, and he couldn't lift the weights when they showed him pink uh, pink in front of him. He couldn't lift it. Well, after 20 minutes, people get violent. (laughs) (laughs) And so some Georgia sheriff, uh, right after that show, uh, painted all his jail pink, and he had bad results. So in the second, that's incredible. They said, we have to have a second show about this because there's some things people didn't get clear in our first show. What Adonis Lay said is Aquarian pink throws rocks in your ruts. So if you want to get things shook up and you don't like sedation, 
that's what you go. And uh, bubblegum pink is the other name for Aquarian pink. It's a, it, like a double bubble color. That's the color of bubblegum pink. That is weakening, strengthening, and you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> wow. And, and uh, is it true that red and yellow, like McDonald's colors, increase appetite? Red doesn't, but yellow does. Red makes you stick around and drink. That's why Shakey's Pizza serves you beer and shows little movies on there. So you stick around and they want you to drink the beer. Uh, McDonald's wants you just to get hungry and get the heck out of there. So yellow and orange are saliva stimulants and stomach stimulants, and they do it. So most of your restaurants are like that, except for seafood restaurants, which want you to relax and most people go out for a seafood dinner in the evening and they relax in a quiet blue environment. You'll find almost all seafood restaurants tend to have a blue tone to them and very little yellows and reds because people won't eat fish in a yellow and red environment. It's really interesting. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Before uh, we started recording, you were telling me about uh, Dinshaw Gadiali and his uh, color therapy lights. Could you talk a little bit about all that? Well, Dinshaw Gadiali was a colonel. He came over from India. I think he put in the first uh, movie theater in India, maybe even. And he was a colonel, a pilot in the New York Air Force, basically. They had like their own police force, Air Force. And then he got into color and got in a lot of trouble because it was curing people. And the AMA did not like that back then even. And so they he, he had litigation after litigation. Finally, they got him on a trumped up uh, charge. He went to prison. But because he helped quell a riot, he got a full pardon. And they even, like Michael Milken, took the charge off his record. Huh. But all through that time, they burned his entire library all of his equipment, his laboratory, and it was a, a it was a felony if you sent uh, one book over a state line. It was a federal felony. They did the same thing with Willem Reich. They did it to. There is, a, I would say, hundreds of people have been jailed for alternate therapies in this country, and quite a few of them have died in jail. Actually, wow. Bless you. <laughs> that was <laughs> Susie sneezing at the truth. Sneeze at the truth, they said. <laughs> and probably health technologies as well, right? Or, or cars that run on water and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, each one works for, and green really does work for pregnancy. Like, let me give you another example. I had a friend of mine, uh, and we went for a walk, and they told me they're going to adopt. And I said, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to adopt because I said, do you have all your organs? And my friend said, yes. I said, then then I can tell you how to adopt, but your husband isn't going to like it. So he looked at me and said, I'll do anything to have a child. So I said, OK. So I told them, wear green, eat green, use green sheets, wear green clothes, eat green food, just think green, crap green, do all of that stuff. And they had a baby. <laughs> Before that, by the way, the husband was so against green that when he showed up for their first date, he looked at her and she had a green sweater. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm not being a macho guy or smart. I can't go out with you if you wear that green sweater. That's how much he was an artist and he never used green in his paintings. Well, anyway, they had a baby. The baby grew up to be a an addict, serious addict, as a as an adolescent on the road, and I ended up uh, becoming friends and have to handle part of her problem. She got over it; she's doing fine today. But holy cow, did that cause them a lot of grief? <laughs> and so that's why I'm really careful when I tell people about the green, because maybe they'll be in for some surprises. Even when she was in her terrible twos, both of them pointed at me and said, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Wow. So it could actually affect the child as well if you overdo the green. Definitely. And if you want the child to grow more, uh, then it will affect the pituitary and green will make taller people. Like say you are known your family as shorter, you want them to grow a little taller and maybe not be quite Michael Jordan or someone, but be taller. Uh, it definitely helps. Now, here's the thing. 
you should always test the color to see if you're in trauma with it. Anyone with green, a green trauma will have a resentment trauma. And then the green will backfire and cause problems. So all you have to do is test for green and see, and then figure out what the trauma is so you can handle green. Then do it. Blue is disillusion. Well, let's start with uh, black. Black is a father trauma. Uh, gray is a mother trauma. Brown is an attachment trauma. Red is a moving trauma or change of lifestyle. Orange is a sexual trauma. Yellow is a decision trauma or a wrong decision that you think you've made or one you're about to can't make. Uh, green, again, is resentment and envy, like green with envy. You've heard that expression. Mm -hmm. And uh, blue is the blues, depression, and even stillbirth can happen or abortion out of that color. And then you have indigo which is more like a trauma with a teacher uh, that tells you to do something that you know you have to do and you respect your teacher, but you do it. And violet is where you stand on your own two feet without the teacher. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and white is completion trauma and ethics sometimes, but completion. And in other words, you said you were going to do something, you didn't do it, and you have a white trauma. <laughs> wow. Interesting. You made me think of uh, designer babies earlier, how they're editing the genes, how you can make your your child taller or shorter, but we could do it with color, right? Yep. And and that will backfire. When they work at genes, they're working at one level of a building. The genes are in, actually, our body connects with the periodic table of the elements. It's a reflex chart to the human body. And your genes are way down in the chart. So anything can happen from environmental in sources, food. In, they have changed genetics with uh, food. They have changed it with hypnotism. One boy without uh, sweat glands was hypnotized to get rid of his fish scales from no sweat glands. And he got sweat glands. How do, can that happen? That's supposed to be impossible. But it's a famous case in 1951. It's been on TV. It's been on, I think, 60 Minutes and, and things like that. But it's been forgotten today. Uh, last I saw it was in the 60s or 70s, I think, on TV. Maybe the 80s, even. It's a famous mm. case. <laughs> mm. So when you say always test the color to see whether um, you can work with it or whether you have trauma associated with it, how would you know? Um, how would you know if you have trauma with the color? Uh, usually the color you think of is when you have an injury, say, oh, I hurt my shoulder. What color do you think of? And whatever color it is, beware, it's probably the color. Now, colors work two ways. Say you have a green trauma or resentment. You either wear excess green to sedate yourself or you avoid excess green or any green like my friend did at that time. So you have two ways. Now, you settle the trauma, then the color is going to be therapeutic. But before that, and that's the one big thing left out of color therapy and why sometimes it doesn't work because it backfires because the color is actually like the person's allergic to it. You could say that's one way of putting it, though it's not uh, exactly correct, but it's an analogy. You are allergic to that color. And then, of course, if you use it, what's going to happen? Like garlic might be good for you, but uh, if you're a vampire, it's not going to be good for you. <laughs> Interesting. Well, you made me think when you said red is a moving trauma, because um, I, I haven't been using my red light device since I moved. And usually I would be consistent with it. So I wonder if I've just been subconsciously avoiding it. Because moving is super stressed, especially cross country. So I should uh, experiment with it and see how I feel. I've had a moving trauma all my life because <laughs> uh, ask my first wife. Uh, the first year we were married, we moved 14 times. <laughs> That's some kind of a record. I wanted, I actually wanted to live in a new place every day. I wanted to live in hotels, go from one to another. And I had a regular job in the aerospace industry at that point around the San Fernando Valley. And so I was pricing all these hotels. She wanted five kids and live in Culver City for the rest of her life and not move any place. I didn't want any children at all. Thank God we had two wonderful children. 
I didn't want any more. She married someone else and had those three. And has living in the same place for years and years and years after that. Wow. So, but my moving trauma read, I, I, I was one of those who moved around and moved around every place. I was a vagabond. In fact, at one time, I billed myself as a vagabond therapist and wanted to live on the Greyhound bus. Back when they didn't schedule, I just hop on a bus. I took a bus. Uh, one time I had a 14 foot ticket. The bus driver said, where the heck are you going? I started in Santa Barbara and ended up in Caribou, Maine, as far as you could go. And then I wrote all the way back. Just I, And I wrote the, the my first uh, Butterflies Need No Taxidermist. I wrote it. I started it on the Greyhound bus. I brought all my notes and decided I'll travel these thousands of miles and write my book. That's, <laughs> that's how I wrote it. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I have nothing on you then with moving. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but moving does. I'll tell you an example of a typical moving trauma. Uh, someone came to me and they'd injured themselves on the left side, I believe it was a male trauma. And uh, they had a red trauma. So I said, have you, has there been a moving trauma? Well, I went back to visit my relatives. And then I came back. What happened is he really wanted to be with his relatives. And when he came back, he realized he wasn't. So he arranged an accident. And so that uh, he wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, Red, see, is a moving trauma because what do you do for, for a red light? You stop. You're supposed to stop. So traveling is a trauma to a red light. Green, you go. And yellow, do you stop or do you go like hell through the uh, through the stoplight? So yellow is always a decision drama. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny to see all the all the cameras down here in California at the lights. Usually people just blast through them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the Swami that I studied with knew color to a, such an extent that when I managed a health food store in Carpinteria and I was going to put a sign up by the freeway, he said, do this, put the sign up and paint it yellow, but put red, you have red in it because yellow they can see, but yellow subconsciously makes them hit the brakes. Make it the type of red that the uh, the construction workers use. And then don't finish it completely because it makes people subconsciously wonder, why isn't that sign finished? And turn it at the side slightly so they also bring the intrigue. And I had people coming in. That's a strange sign you have there. <laughs> <laughs> Years ago when I got into blue light blocking glasses, I remember I started wearing uh, at night when I was driving. I didn't. I did it for a short period of time, but orange tinted glasses and red tinted glasses, and uh, that was not a good idea <laughs> because it changed the colors of the streetlights. It does make it complicated. Now, as a hippie, I drove with beehive glasses. <laughs> That's getting a bit much. <laughs> Is that like a kaleidoscope type thing or what? Yeah, yeah. So I saw wow. multiple images. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I was a threat to humanity, I think, or to dri other drivers. And moon glasses, those were easier, you know, where you get all the reflections. We had all kinds of, and I had red glasses back then. We had uh, the, psych shop, the psychedelic shop sold red glasses, yellow glasses, orange glasses. Then I got into chakras and I experimented with uh, red on Monday, orange yeah. on Tuesday, yellow, and different times of day as well the the el every element according to Gaudi Ali has a over overall color to it uh like hydrogen is red uh helium is orange etc you have these colors and they actually can help the absorption of it like orange light will build stronger bones because it's the predominant color of calcium boron silica those are all elements under the orange spectrum. Look him up in Gaudiali's chart. He has all the elements listed like that. And my uh, mentor, Swami Nitty Gritty, pretty much went with that chart. He had some slight differences. And maybe when I get a chance, I'll email you some of the differences. They're only minor. There's about 
eight or nine of them. I think he has slight different color differences. But otherwise, Gaudiali pretty well got it right uh, that those colors do affect those elements. So if you want them to absorb more, you put more of a certain color in. And Hmm. you can even balance your body by sleeping on a green pillowcase and having a magenta sheet. So we used to take Ritz dye. I don't even know if they have magenta anymore. And you have a green pillowcase and green because the head is the ovum. And rep- you notice how it's just a giant ovum. The sperm is the spine. The place where the, uh, where the sperm uh, impregnated the ovum is exactly the medulla oblongata, the only instant part of the body. You can't, assassins use it because you can't yell. Any place else, they, you shoot a person in the brain, they can yell, and then you're outed. But at that point, you stick a needle in there or a gun or whatever, or get a needle close to it, and you can take a paralyzed person and make them walk. It's the most powerful place in the body. Anyway, the ovum is green, and then the magenta is for the rest of the body, which is, which is the, uh, the sperm. Basically, the ambulators, we're still swimming, you know, and and the brain just says, come here, big boy. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been hearing a lot of people or more people talk about it now on podcasts, like the blue spot in the brain, like the locus ceruleus. Uh, have you have you looked into that? I guess it's it's like deep in the brainstem. Yeah, various of those spots have different uh, ways of uh, uh, your different modalities, and you can access them with foods by what's mm. called geometric body resonance, used to be the doctrine of signatures. Mm. So if I have an almond, what does almond mean? In Greek, it's called amygdala. Hmm, I think I've heard that before. It's a part of the brain. Pine nut, the pineal gland. And they all represent that uh, cashews for the jaw. They, if you look at the geometry of these nuts, oh, uh, pistachios. Do they not look like eyes? Do they not have visual purple in there and green? We use visual purple, visual violet in our eyes. So you take those various nuts and you affect your body. And at particular times of day, ovum time is mostly in the morning up until noon. Then you you work on the lungs to the top of the brain, and the rest of the body is the rest of the day. Uh, noon is the cutoff point between the sperm and the ovum. Mm. Mm. So I have a question, Adam. Like, what's the difference between Dinshaw's um, like different colored sheets and say like the two hundred fifty watt heat lamp? Because um, that has orange and red in it, right? But are they? It, would that be the same as Dinshaw's colors, or is it more broad spectrum? More broad spectrum. In the case of uh, red light, you're more beneficial with broad spectrum through the oranges, the reds, the, the dark reds, and the infrareds. But in Dinshaw, you want an exact frequency. So they're designed for exact frequency, and you want just one. You want to do it in the dark. Now, here's something people don't know to make more effectiveness. I learned, again, from Madonna Lay, that to use a color five minutes on, five minutes in the dark, five minutes on, five minutes in the dark. And the reason is obvious. If you come into a room where there's a grandfather clock, you hear it the first few minutes. Then where'd it go? You don't even hear it. You can meditate. Don't even hear it. You blot it out. Same with color. You want to make sure it's there. So one time, here's an experience. Uh, I lived with a girlfriend over uh, Adano Lay's uh, classroom at one time, and we found a kitty cat on the porch. So she wanted that kitty cat, wanted to save it. So I said, okay. So it was really sick. We took it to the vet. The vet says, this cat has, and I don't remember what the name of the disease was. Uh, You want me to put it to sleep for you? you." Oh, no, my girlfriend says, I don't want to put that kitty to sleep. Well, grown cats do not survive this disease. This cat hasn't got a chance. You, You should have me put it to sleep. Oh, no, no, no. So we took it home. So I said, you know, Adonal Lay said that uh, cats, animals are more responsive to colors than human beings. Why don't we try an experiment? So there's a technique called surrogate testing where you put 
the person into testing mode for whatever you're testing, whoever or whatever. In this case, it was a kitty cat. So we put her into that testing and the only two colors that tested correctly were orange and green. So I didn't have an orange light bulb. We used the green one. We locked ourselves in the bathroom, had no windows, green light, five minutes, green lights, a black light. I mean, off, Mm -hmm. on five, off five, on five. The cat suddenly threw up and goes completely well. I brought the cat into the the vet and he just was astounded. He he couldn't believe that the cat had survived. (laughs) Wow. And how did you find out that it was a green uh, trauma with the cat? Muscle testing. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah, just simple muscle testing. Now we put her into, now here's a problem before I I talk about surrogate testing. And I have forgotten the technique. There's a way to get into the surrogate testing and a way to get out. Because if you don't get out, you're connected to the cat. And there was a famous uh, veterinarian who had an introduction to his book by Andrew Wow. And in one of his chapters, he said, you're going to think I'm crazy, but your pet is a tra- is a surrogate for your diseases. So people who have kidney problems tend to adopt cats because they often do. And they're often on the same medicines that make them well. And he gave case after case for an entire chapter of how that happens. And people who used to read, uh, what is it, uh, Jimmy Hatlow's cartoon strips where a guy looks like his dog, each one looks like a dog or the pet, you know, and everything like that. So uh, there is a definite connection that we pick pets for certain reasons. And they actually, you know, a cat will come up and start purring and rub their paws on where you have a problem. And a cat's fur can grow bones, by the way. NASA uses a cat's fur to do that. They have that exact frequency, but they don't tell anybody. National Geographic says they do the frequency. They don't tell you what it is. I had to find it out in a pet or veterinarian magazine because otherwise everybody, why take the supplements and why take the uh, the drugs for calcium? Just go and have a cat so on our website do we still have our cat's fur maybe not we had a cat's fur up there for about <laughs> for an hour of a cat's purring and said do you have any any uh, osteomalacia osteoporosis problems listen to the cat we use that when vibrant gal broke her ankle and she was supposed to have all kinds of pens and needles and everything in all of this stuff she re- refused to do it it healed up wow yeah, it's funny. I saw someone talking about one of those uh, biohacking devices that like vibrates on your chest and someone described it. It's like a cat purring on your chest. And in my head, I thought, why don't you just get the cat? <laughs> but I guess that was our thought. <laughs> yeah, because you can get when they did the particular frequencies, because a cat is somewhere between 18 and 40, I think, in frequencies, depending, and it goes through the spectrum. But if you take individual uh, individual notes. And I I saw this in science magazines. This isn't a new age thing. You can find some frequency about 32 cycles per second, hit a piano note on that, and you can break a window. So it can actually break a bone. Th- this is science. It's not metaphysical stuff because I mostly went through these old science magazines where they did these experiments and, uh, you know, where Caruso could break a glass. Uh, by a certain note. And so you can do that, but you can also heal with those frequencies. And usually the healing frequencies are multiple frequencies. In other words, they overlap one another. Mm -hmm. You never know with a single frequency what you're going to get because they haven't investigated it. There's no reason they couldn't investigate it, but there's no money in it. They want an expensive drug (laughs) or surgery. (laughs) That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been liking the, the last like year, like the Dan Winter, like Therify thing. So it's, it's like broad sp- frequency plasma. Um, they're really pricey machines, but if you ever get a chance to use one, it's pretty cool feeling. Like I've fallen asleep in between them, like basically right. a massage, massage table and then one bulb on each side. And it's basically uh, 250,000 volts going into neon noble gas and then 
that <laughs> kind of emits. <laughs> Well, we're affected by the environment, so whatever environment we're subjecting ourselves, there are fields of all kinds around us. Uh, we're not e even being in a Faraday cage like a truck driver. That's why they often have problems because they don't they're disconnected from the environment. And our environment is very important, whether you call it astrology or whatever you call it, we are in sync. And Dr. No, Professor Frank Brown did a unique experiment. Because some things, when I talk about solar nutrition, it's not just light. Light is not the only frequency. Mm. Professor Brown went 200 feet below the earth. He put potato plugs in a pressurized cage in the dark and locked them in. And the potato plugs could tell the weather a day and a half in advance. Now, what was getting through there? The cosmic rays couldn't get through that. The barometric pressure couldn't get through it because it was pressurized uh, for one specific pressure. And yet they could predict the weather in advance. Professor Brown was, what would you call it, ostracized by the whole circadian method, uh, the whole circadian rhythm crowd, because they wanted it to be genetics. And he was saying, no, it's coming from the environment. I mean, you wake up when there's light in your eyes, common sense. That's not in genetic. So they hired a guy at Cold Springs Laboratory with an unpronounceable name, PT something or other, to be the father of biotech when he was the original father of biotech. But they didn't want people to know the real circadian rhythms are outside and inside, not genetically programmed for for 50 generations and all the BS that they give you. So most of what you read about circadian rhythms being genetic, untrue. Blood cells, they, they can be affected by circadian rhythms. Blood cells not only have no DNA, they don't even have, they, they don't even have a nucleus. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Interesting. Um, so I, I want to ask you, like, say, I think you mentioned earlier, like the chakra glasses that you tried years ago. If someone were to get colored glasses like that, would they... Is the best way to do it to wear them like five minutes on, five minutes off? Or like, could you overdo it if you wear them all day? Or You might not want to be doing a therapeutic <laughs> effect all the time. So it'd probably be better to have them on all day. Now, if you were going to wear them to stimulate uh, minerals in your body and nutrients in your body, they all have colors, mm -hmm. you would do it the following way. You would wear magenta glasses from three to six in the morning. You would wear red glasses from six to nine in the morning. You would wear orange glasses from nine to 12, yellow glasses from 12 to three, uh, green glasses from three to six, six to nine would be blue, indigo would be nine to 12, and violet from 12 to three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that could kind of drive you crazy, but you could actually <laughs> stimulate your minerals and you could wear them only at those specific time to uh, stimulate those particular minerals. Wow, you wouldn't be able to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Now, of course, I studied with the Swami that didn't sleep, and one of his students, David Neal, mastered it. He didn't sleep either. I traveled with him for a month, and he only lay down for 10 minutes, and I thought, aha, I caught him. He's going to go to sleep, but he was stretching his back out. <laughs> he was vertical for over a month. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Okay, so to stimulate minerals. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, so I did an experiment where I got, um, it was actually a guy that I met at like music festival, like years and years ago, like 2012 or something. And he started like a colored glass company and I didn't try it until, um, like early this year. And I was like coming out of the Idaho winter, like really long winter. And I wore the blue glasses and I did feel like this immediate calming effect. Um, <laughs> and I wonder if it's cause it was, it's been gray, you know, for, you know, five, six months and I'm, you know, having the strong blue color. It felt it was like an immediate nervous system kind of calming effect with the blue. Definitely. When I lived in Seattle, I didn't do well there. I was there in March and we had one sunny day. 
And everybody came out like it was a miracle walking around and and in their bathing suits and everything. And then that lake, I think it was called Green Lake, was totally deserted. Otherwise, you'd see maybe one person walking their dog. But for that one day, it was like Coney Island. It was just wall to wall people everywhere because they were celebrating. When I left there, I usually obey the speed limit, but I had a drive away car and I left at 90 miles an hour all the way down to L.A. because I'm a... Southern California, Central California type of guy. And I don't do well in those kind of, I lived in Bellingham too. Those those climates don't agree with me. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I tried really hard to, uh, like speaking of light, use, I had multiple different UV light devices, different blue light devices, um, probably 10 different light therapy devices. I would use a combination of all of them and it still didn't, uh, Hold a candle to sunlight. You know? No, there's something about sunlight that's just magical. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like for the emotional effects, like you're talking about, like the like releasing traumas and stuff, that's probably the best way to use um, use you know colored lights or SADs, a seasonal affective disorder. And by the way, people take melatonin. It's a depressant. That's what causes seasonal oppressive, yet they take it as a tonic. And actually, melatonin is good if you don't take any because it tends to absorb serotonin. And serotonin is the bad guy. But when you take melatonin, you have excess serotonin because there's nothing to be, it doesn't have to convert it to melatonin, and then you have a problem. Also, uh, melatonin is not a sleep chemical because it's a d- light dark chemical so guess what a mouse has its cell- it's uh, uh melatonin in the dark too it w- it wakes it up so it's basically like an alarm clock you can use at any time for any purpose you want it is not a sleep drug at all but people's unconscious are so uh, unaware of that that puts them right to sleep it's like hypnosis or suggestion or mesmerism or whatever but the the cultural meme puts people to sleep when they take melatonin and you can give them a sugar pill and get the same results usually <laughs> have you heard of anyone having effects from a uh, five hydroxytryptophan like five hdp like my friend was saying he loves that stuff like it definitely has a calming effect when he takes that um isn't that the same thing pretty much as melatonin? Uh, yeah, yeah, it converts to serotonin. So like if someone's... Uh, yeah, that's the problem. They have see, effects, but it's... Bananas, it's right? <laughs> yeah, and, and and serotonin, by the way, guess what serotonin is? It's the stinging, stinging nettle. You probably had some stinging nettle yeah. up there in Idaho. It's all over yeah. the place when oh, I yeah. was up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the sting and stinging nettle, and it's the sting in whatever creature killed the crocodile whisperer, Steve Irwin, was that his name? That was mo- mostly serotonin. Serotonin is in wash stings, scorpions, almost all scorpions have it in it. It's the major chemical. It is not a relaxant, and yet people will look at all the shootings that have been going on. I don't want to talk about that on regular regular look what happened alex jones but but serotonin is not the thing it's supposed to be and and it's been outed even in the 90s they started to realize that serotonin has problems it is not a relaxant by any means <laughs> interesting interesting um yeah we've been watching uh, uh x files at night to relax <laughs> that, that's i was i watched a lot of those myself <laughs> nice i grew up with it my dad loved that show and uh i didn't know there's so many there's like nine seasons of it so we're starting it at the first and going going down the list i guess the main the main uh david Duchovny was like a sex addict right someone was telling me <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> did you see the do you remember the show where he said how he would die he did no. with the 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 fortune teller told him that he would die with a plastic bag over his head and blah 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 blah. he did a movie after that with another famous director where he played that where he was he's found dead with that uh that type of uh what do you, asphyxi, asphyxiation oh, right. sexuality you know because wow. it's well known that when a person is hanged by the neck to die they get an erection <laughs> all the time without uh, without doubt california took advantage of that 
because back while we were the most repressive state for uh, surgeries on people without them uh, knowing about it or or with that with them objecting to make them infertile. So when they were hanging criminals, the death penalty, they sold their gonads to millionaires. One of them lived right here down the road in Lotus Land, uh, to, married to Ghana Walaski. Walska, Ghana Walska. He was a, he was one of the the uh, what is it? Who had the the Reaper? What's that cotton cotton thing that they had down south? McCormick. <laughs> she, she's my Susie Pedia. <laughs> McCormick. McCormick was the guy who got that operation, and that operation was usually it was goat glands and things like that. Thousands of people got that operation, but some of them got prisoners. If you had enough money, you went to San Quentin particularly and got someone, some prisoners going as, and you paid the state of California a lot of money to do it. <laughs> that's incredible. Wow. Um, let's see. We have a ton of questions, Adam, about color. Do you want to jump into some of them? Let's jump into it. <laughs> and by the way, for your, your yeah. information. Oh, yeah. These are the books to get. Uh, this is not, we're on audio probably to the audience, but you can see it. Mm. And I can send you the information on it. Let There Be Light by Darius Dinshaw, who is the son of Colonel Gadiali. That's a basic beginner's guide, very handy. And then a very fascinating book is the original book, The Spec the Spectrochrometry Encyclopedia. <laughs> and uh I was lucky enough a colonic therapist gave me both these books for free when I used to do workshops in Texas. And I treasure them. They really have a lot of very valuable information that uh, I use extensively. Questions already. Oh, wow. Yeah, I I have a um I'm trying to remember the author that wrote the book uh he talked a lot about uh eyesight and how he restored his patients eyesight using um, color therapy. Maybe the name will come to me. <laughs> it can be done. Now, under hypnosis, they get they have healed colorblind people, but almost all hypnotists can't make it stick. They can see all the colors under hypnosis, but they bring them back and they can't. So it's really rare, but it can be done. Other eye ailments have been healed, including blindness by hypnosis and mesmerism. Wow. Interesting. Um, uh, someone asked, what does it mean when two people keep wearing the same color unknowingly? Like, say, a couple wears the same clothes without the same color without planning it out. They have the same trauma. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it draws them together. You know, uh, people with similar traumas match. They have the same type of karma, whatever you want to call it, destiny. And there is such a thing. People are drawn to people to fulfill their traumas as well as their uh, their their good stuff in life. But traumas attract traumas. It's like a magnet. And this electromagnetism, frequency, all type of frequencies and color is a very important one. Again, in the dark, you can play, you can put colored tarps under the ground and change the tastes and chemistry of your plants. So yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, thoughts on color puncture. I've never heard of that one. Is that like acupuncture with color? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you can do color puncture. And one way to do it is you take a, you can take a color and beam it similar to a laser. This kind of involved process. And if you know acupuncture, you can stimulate the acupuncture point by doing it on the left to speed things up and on the right to slow things down with the color. The only thing that messes it up, you better test first to see if there's a trauma because it could backfire. Otherwise, color puncture is done. And I don't know if they do it with needles too. It's uh, very possible, but you can you can use even, you can even stimulate it with sound. There used to be a pleasant sound device and I was shown how to hold it on the points too and use sonic therapy like that. So the points can be used for any other reason, and the reflexes in the body too can be stimulated. Interesting. Wow. Um, this is actually a, a good question because uh, today's 
uh, orange day, right? And I, I didn't have an orange mug, so I have a yellow mug, my, <laughs> my mushroom tea. But, uh, <laughs> uh, someone asked, is it better to go with an earlier or later color? So, for example, on Thursday, uh, if you can't do green, would you do yellow or blue? Uh, blue. Jump ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's similar to the idea. If you have a train coming through town and it only appears at three o'clock, would you rather be five minutes early or five minutes late? <laughs> I'd rather be five minutes early or even a half hour early, but I wouldn't want to be a half hour late because then I got 23 and a half hours to wait for the next train. So usually you go forward into the next meal. So uh, same with eating solar or color therapy. Okay, so do the next one. So, <laughs> interesting. Um, let's see. Long-term effects of constant blue light exposure from devices. I notice people have different views on this. Like some people never block blue light at night and fall asleep within seconds and feel great. You know, I've heard that. <laughs> well, it's not as bad as people say, but it will interfere with your uh with your consciousness, your circadian rhythms can be bothered by it, depending on how much exposure you have. Also, what you eat, because we have various parts of the brain that stimulate various parts. So light is tied in with a super chiasmatic nuclei. There's two of them on either, so either side. While uh, uh, darkness is tied in with the ventromedial nuclei, and what is the other one? The other one is the satiety center. I forget its exact long name. And it's tied in with eating. So you can eat foods of tree foods, vine foods, and root foods and time yourself. So you can use other things, including the social timing, to overcome the light clock. See? So there's ways to do it. If you can... Many people, even red light messes their circadian rhythms. One out of 10 can basically luminance gets them. So you can't really put it as a 100% rule. It is better if we're in the dark at night. It's not going to happen. We better get used to evolving because we, now with computers and everything, and I'm up all night usually, wake up in the middle of the night. And look at it this way. Primitive people, so-called primitive they didn't sleep an eight-hour day. They slept a certain amount at, at night, then they woke up. They often did tribal dances and things at liver time or lung time in the middle of the night. They'd have a watchman, maybe. You couldn't sleep all night because some tiger might come and devour you or, or a cobra snake or something like that. So eight hours is a new idea of ours. And of course, I studied with a man who didn't sleep at all. So as long as you get your delta brainwave replenished, you don't even need it. Wow. Uh, but blue light and, and uh, the, the type of lights they have today are invasive. And it's better to get as little of them as possible if you can. If you live in Las Vegas, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of luck. Do you, do you think our our eyes are going to uh, to change with with this influx of light? Like I remember years ago hearing uh, Daniel Vitalis uh, theorize, you know, the gray aliens, the gray extraterrestrials, and their <laughs> their big almond black eyes, and that was. You know, that's us in the future because we had to adapt and basically put up shades to protect from this light. I think we will evolve. And already the idea of three color receptors has been disproven. Most people have it, but some people have four. Pigeons have six and some humans have extra ones in four even. Women are much more likely to have four receptors than three. That's why they seem to be more... Hmm, this room, I don't kind of like the color coordination you got here being a bachelor. So maybe we should change that, please. <laughs> uh, women are definitely more color conscious than guys are usually. Always an exception to the rule. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Is, does that explain um, partially like psychic abilities that some people have, having more color receptors? Turquoise. That's how to be. Okay. That If you want memory. Expose yourself to orange. That will give you memory. It, it's a sexual color, but it's also a memory color. And that's why we remember our sexual escapades more than other things. It basically builds memory, but you lose your 
psychic abilities. The Navajo always had turquoise around. And that's why they knew, hmm, uh, my wife is coming here today from the wigwam or whatever, whatever they were living in. <laughs> Actually, that's probably not what they lived in. But anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> Interesting. So more turquoise. So turquoise, turquoise clothes really and glasses. And, Particularly wow. if you do it at uh, kidney time. Kidneys, we're psychic through the kidneys often. If you notice, your ears are kidneys. There's kidney spots in the brain. And your left eye ideally should be slightly lower than the right to compensate for the exact opposite with the kidneys. <laughs> That's wow. how you can tell your flow in your body by how your organs, if our eyes are perfectly level, like they might build an AI, they don't flow. The flow is gone. You should be slightly off. If you take, you ever take a picture of your face, one half is quite a bit different than the other. The more geometric we are, the less psychic and evolved we are. The inventor of the Bell helicopter, Arthur, his name escapes me, but he uh, used to be a metaphys metaphysician. And he noticed that a tree is very geomet geometric and then it gets more and more. But humans uh, uh, are geometric in the front and the back very specifically. And if you go down, you'll find more and more order, orderliness. We actually are unorderliness. Our left arm will be bigger than the right arm or right arm, left arm, depending on what you're using. We're basically getting to where to crap in, the, in many ways. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I took a class in college and, and uh, it was like a psychology and sexuality class or something like that. And they showed us a little... Um, uh, TV documentary where they're talking about the you know 1.618 golden mean ratio and how people tend to be more attracted to that symmetry. But what you're saying is the opposite. It's interesting. Yeah, well, that that does uh, work on. But well, when I say lower, I don't mean it to be uh, disrespectful to plants because <laughs> the golden meal mean is how uh, how. Uh, Photosynthesis occurs. It's actually a quantum effect using the golden mean. And if you look at a pineapple, it's a perfect golden mean. So nature uses it. We are evolving past the golden mean into whatever. So I studied photography one time in Redding, California, and the teacher said, forget all that balance stuff. Just take your photo and see if it looks good. You know, he, he was one of the right uh, at that time. Uh, I wondered about that, but since then I've reevaluated that he was probably right. We're we're designed to be uh, not only on the bores, but on the sights or on the wow. senses, where we can uh, use things and not be uh, have our physiology disturbed by that kind of disruptions. I, I'm glad you mentioned photography because um, I, I almost forgot to ask this question. Um, so my our photography. So my friend David recently, he said he found like a really old photograph that someone took of his aura at one of these health conferences. And it was almost exactly identical to one that he got a few weeks ago, um, showing that it's pretty valid because it didn't change that much. And um, the last one I got, I think there was a lot of white and violet and indigo and then blue around my throat. Um and the guy was spot on. It was one of these, you know, kind of new age conferences down here in Southern California. And uh, he gave me a reading after just from looking at my picture. And he's like, you like weird animals, the weirder, the better. And like, he was just saying all this stuff that no one else could have known, like no one could have known without knowing me. Um, so, yeah, uh, just your thoughts on aura photography. Is it legitimate? Um Basically, in, in these photos, there were like orbs above my head. I think there were four of them. And he was like, yeah, that's a Native American medicine woman. That's an extraterrestrial, like a, like a scientist that follows you around. And I like, went down each one. <laughs> I used to do aura photography, but wow. it wasn't really accurate uh, for several reasons. We used a coil. You put your hand in and it actually depended on how, your brightness, depended on how much you pushed down or didn't push down and things of that nature. But 
uh, you can tell acupuncture information from it. So I told a woman that I studied with a man who could uh, who could decipher uh, that photograph better than I could. Did did she want to uh, talk to him? And uh, so she said, well, take the picture and show it to him. So he looked at her and said, well, uh, I can tell you one thing. She went through a terrible trauma uh, one year ago today or, or one year ago. So I went back and told her that, that you went, he said you went through a terrible trauma. He even used stronger words. I lightened it a little bit. Terrible trauma one year ago. Uh, 11 months, 28 days ago. I must see this man. <laughs> Wow. So, so I don't know what, what the denouement was or what the drama was because she went to see him. But uh, but you can tell things. And what the aura is, is what you can't absorb. It's your trauma pattern. Wow. So, if, oh, he has a, be- a beautiful blue aura. No, he has a disillusionment drama, or rejection wow. drama. His girlfriend rejected him. Uh, he has a green aura, this thing. And I've checked that out extensively. And it's true. A realized man has no aura. And a golden aura is a self-hate aura. (laughs) And a silver aura is a talk too much aura. And on and on, you have different types of auras. Everybody has them. I got an aura. Everybody has them, unless you're totally enlightened. I'm not close to that. So uh, I forget. I think I have a bluish and things like that. I studied with a man who could see him named Sean Harabans, who recently went on. Are you familiar with him? I'm not. This guy was uh, really good. Uh, he was tested by Dr. Roll and Dr. Ryan as the most most uh, accurate psychic under their laboratory conditions. And he went out on the road and gave readings. And I took photographs to him because I was kind of a doubter. I, wor- I managed a metaphysical bookstore, and I've seen a lot of them. I've seen real people and fake people. A lot of them are real. In fact, when you see someone doing something fake, as Rumi said, there's always real money that the counterfeit is balanced on. So there are real people. And Harabans was for real. I mean, he told me things about my friend that they're going to get divorced in five years. They did all kinds of specific things like that. But other things, a friend of mine went for a session and he said, what about you saying that flying saucers are going to land in New York in 1999? Oh, that's just something for the press. They'll believe anything. (laughs) But he was the real deal. Sean Harabans. Uh, wow. So what is a black aura? Because I've heard of people having that. Uh, that's uh, father drama. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'll give you an example of dramas. A, a woman came to me and she had a bone that wouldn't heal. It had been like eight months, no healing. And so I said, what color do you think of? She said, black and gray. I said, you have a trauma with both of your parents. Yeah. Eight months ago, they died in a tragic auto crash. (laughs) So once she emoted about it and got it off her chest, her bone healed in two days. (laughs) Wow. That's how sometimes just recognizing the trauma, our subconscious hides the trauma. We're the last to know. Our friends know. Like if you're in a bad relationship, I've been in one. My friends know it. I haven't a clue. <laughs> I've been married five times. Not a clue. My friend said, oh, here he goes again. <laughs> He's picking the same person, too. I had a friend, by the way, that picked someone. He was going to leave one for another. And I said, she's the same person. She just got a different hair color. No, no, she's completely different. <laughs> yeah, our unconscious is uh, is kind of clueless. <laughs> I mean, our conscious is kind of clueless to our subconscious. It knows everything. The definition of the unconscious, according to Jung, is everything you don't know. That's a lot. <laughs> wow. Um, besides the Dinshaw device, someone asked, what cool light machines are out there that most people listening don't know about already? Would you say that's the coolest one? or? Yeah, I think so at this point. But regular uh, light bulbs can work. You can, you know, I I did use an incandescent green light bulb, the party lights. They're illegal in California, so you might have to go someplace else. We use uh, red heat lamps, by the way, for our lights, and we use yellow because it's the only incandescent we can. And and yellow light is good. 
Originally, the incandescent lamp was invented by the Edison Corporation before it became General Electric. Morgan fired Edison (laughs) before it became General Electric, and it was designed for firelight, for full frequency, not to be sunlight, because they knew you would interfere with rhythms back in the 1918s in that that area. So it was designed for firelight. Your best light for nighttime that we've been adapted for millions of years is firelight. We've had fire probably before we were fully human, (laughs) even uh, eating cooked meat and protecting us from tigers and snakes and whatever else is flying through the air. Interesting. Yeah, we just got a bunch of those Edison incandescent lights because um, being off grid, those weren't an option because 60 watts can make or break the bank. <laughs> but being being on grid, 60 watts, you know, having 12 of those or whatever, it's not a big deal. Definitely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those have a nice glow to them and they just get really warm. I've noticed when I put my hand by them. Those Edison they do. It, once you start messing it with, uh, they have... Edison bulbs that are more incandescent, more like sunlight, it's better to get the plane. The original one was designed for a particular reason. General Electric, you know, General Electric years ago found out that we have a fourth autonomic nervous system. People know about the parasympathetic. They know about the uh, sympathetic nervous system. They know about the enteric nervous system. Because I know about yin and yang and balance, I realized one was missing. And not until I got a hold of that general electric research that I realized I found the paraadrenal nervous system. Every cell in your body, every cell in your skin that has uh, tyrosine or, mm, wow, I forgot the name of that other amino acid. Anyway, in your skin is part of the adrenal medulla, which is supposed to be the little bitty middle of the pyramid on top of the kidney. It's only supposed to be located there, according to scientists today. They don't know that it's in the heart and it's all over in every cell in the skin that has phenylalanine. That's the one. Phenylalanine and tyrosine in the skin transforms, detoxifies cholesterol, gives us vitamin D and a whole bunch of other vitamins they don't know about and uh, testosterone. (laughs) Is that how um, acupuncture works? Through that paradrenal nervous system? No, it works through the sympathetic. Actually, reflexology uses the sympathetic nervous system to control the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Acupuncture uses the parasympathetic nervous system to control the same two. Think of reflexology as a weather system that is larger, called a mild weather system. What do they call it? Opposite to the acupuncture one is the cyclone, the uh, tornado that causes that kind of uh, of the high pressure system. That's the reflex point, And the low pressure system is the reflexology. Same thing goes in our body, the same physiology. So mm-hmm. the uh, a reflex system works more for correcting and the acupuncture system works more for uh, pain control. That's why you mm-hmm. go deeper. Reflex is stimulated. Even color will stimulate the skin even more. The original auricular therapy not only used touch, it had three reflexes in it, and one was designed just for color. And they, and they knew that the color reversed at the neck as well. I it is, I haven't studied auricular therapy in years, but I used to be really into it and have all the esoteric books that I paid a lot of money for at one time. I gave them away to someone who I thought would use it, and they never did. So I kind of regret giving those books away. <laughs> and that's therapy up for the ear, right? For the, the ear has actually three reflexes. You often see the upside down baby in it. That's the one that's more for acupuncture. But there's also a, a man's head. And a uh, and a full man right side up as well. Those work on. You have three reflexes: one for the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And the the ectoderm is the outside, very sensitive. That's color. Then you have the light brushing, like you can tickle it with a feather, and then you have the poke through. Yin is deep. You put a needle in deep. 
uh, with reflexology work in the surface. In fact, your reflex works better by pulling and pinching the skin outward. Your acupuncture works downward. You can't obviously pucker your skin with a needle. So they're designed like that. In fact, what, what, what got me into the fact that uh, there had to be a mistake in either Chinese medicine or conventional physiotherapy is what is the medulla doing with adre- adrenaline? which is should be on the border of your body and corticosteroids are in the outside in the cortex where they're supposed to relax you. So, so for years, I wondered how could that be in the middle? Then I found out that even the cortex migrates out around the area, around the omentum and places they find it. But The super migrator is the peradrenal nervous system where the adrenaline goes to the outside where you can have a have a bee land on you and instantly act and know that there's a problem with it. (laughs) Wow. I'm curious, Adam, I had a friend reach out um, with uh, annoying tinnitus and ask me if I had any recommendations. And I've heard over the years, you know, magnesium and, you know, different things for it. since we're talking about the ear, what are your what are your thoughts on it? Because it seems like more people nowadays are dealing with tinnitus than than ever. You know, uh, the thing about tinnitus is, I've been looking for my list of fifty reasons for tinnitus that I had collected in the newsletter, and I haven't been able to find it. I've been looking for ten years. One day I'll stumble yeah. on it. <laughs> but here's the deal on tinnitus: if you have tinnitus in the right ear. Don't change it. It's a metaphysical benefit. If you have it in the left ear, it could mean uh, high blood pressure, and there are systemic reasons for it. Also, you can have a simple injury to it as well. But uh, eventually, if you meditate enough, you will get it in the center of your head and actually hear it there. So I was in Grants Pass, Oregon, and I met this cudgeled chiropractor in his 80s. So weak that his dog's nose would push him out of the chair so he could walk around. But he said, I have a complaint since you seem to know things about this. I have a roaring in my head here, not in my ears. How can I get rid of it? And I repeated something that Adonis Lay told me years ago. It took me 21 years to get that. And I, I wouldn't get rid of it if I could get rid of it so i so he felt better that at least he was meditating and he was quite a character talk about a trauma he had a picture of his wife from the 1940s in a bathing suit that he had left and she wouldn't let him smoke cigars in the in the house so he would deliberately keep that picture on the mantelpiece and smoke his cigar for decades he did this his carpet was this deep in cigar ashes, a half an inch deep. And you had to, if you stomped your foot, puffs of cigarette ash would raise on the, wow. <laughs> out of the floor. But anyway, it's, it's, if it's in your right ear, it's actually a blessing. And if it's in your left ear, then you should get checked out. It can be local. It can be systemic. And adjusting certain minerals can or cannot help them, depending. You can experiment with it. Interesting. Wow. Is that the same as the Audible live stream? You have it in the That's center? it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> exactly it. And eventually, it starts here in Dr. Stone's thing it ends here but it doesn't it goes back to the medulla oblongata and there are eight levels my friend had the audible live stream in his right ear and my high school friend i didn't know this till years later and he was an inventor of the first class the guy was a genius he invented bondo ever hear of bondo no uh, bondo is used by uh 3m corporation and they made a fortune he gave it to him for free he didn't care. He wasn't really interested. He just wanted to make his 25 bucks an hour in his profession and leave it alone. Didn't use banks, put the put the money in his walls, buried in his backyard, real character. But anyway, he had this, uh, he told me, I have a ringing in my ears and I can't sleep. So he would stay and listen to television on full speed, of full volume all night. 
because I at that time I was meditating and I said, well, eventually he's going to go to sleep because he's got to go to work. And he had to drive over 100 miles through L.A. to work, to go to work. <laughs> so he didn't have much time. But anyway, uh, he told me, I have this ringing in my ears. And he said, I found out that there's a flat spot in the back of my skull. A any of your audience can feel that. You can feel it. It's actually like a ski slope back there. It's not round. He said, I couldn't find anything in any medical book, but uh, but uh, it's there. And I knew by pressing on it, I would increase the sound. So I got a 40 pound pump and tried to pull it back into the shape and it didn't work. So anyway, I said, Donald Lev gave us charts of the Audible life stream and what they do. Let me go back and call you. So I got so excited because I said, it said pressing on that increases the Audible life stream and gives you migraines. So I said, do you have migraines? Yeah, but I cured it by putting my hands in cold water and I could control it. My daughter has it and she can predict earthquakes with it. And my mother has it. It's in her family. But I figured out how to de deal with it. So I said, you have the audible live stream. I wouldn't I wouldn't try to change it. That's your creativity. And he was a awesome inventor put to bad use as a high school student because he had the key to the girls locker and all the keys in the entire school. He hit, could burglarize any jewelry store with a hairpin, made counterfeit money, all of that when he, before he was even in, in high school. When we were in the 10th grade, actually, when I first met him. And of course, we found a pajama commercial and put the man on top of the woman in the showcase. No one, when they saw that, we had such a big crowd, I couldn't even get in the building, and it was gone an hour later. <laughs> but That's his hilarious. creativity, in other, in other words, the audible live stream can give you creativity. It's not in the center of the brain where people think it is. You can make yourself smarter by coordinating your eyes and doing eye exercises. They call that, uh, what did they used to call it, uh, edu Educational kinesiology. Uh, they banned it because Eckenkar didn't like that name. And so now they call themselves Brain Gym. And it's based on uh, an actual type of optim optimetry where they actually train you to make double images, single images, any images you want. You can increase your intelligence so much that my friend Sarita said her daughter's flunk in school, can you do anything? So you do this little eye test, and I saw her eye jump instead of smoothly go back and forth, it jumped. I said, you know, normally I would say do some educate exercises, but you got the money, you're living in Hollywood, go to a behavioral optometrist and get the real deal. She became an A student all the way through the the, all the way through junior high, through high school, through college, and she's in the film in, 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 in industry today, a student solid after that with her eyes only. Wow. So what do they do with behavioral optometry? Teach you to make double images, single images. You wear a red lens and a green lens and you look at and you draw you take two strings to the wall and you move them back and forth to some simple ones. You do figure eights. Uh, with your hands pointed at you and go sideways and around. Your audience can't see this, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine was a chiropractor, flunked his, uh, flunked his test. He caused problems for the chiropractor, so they didn't want him back, and he flunked his test. So I checked his eyes. They were really bad. So he practiced like that, and then he went back and took it and passed the test. So wow. it works for balance. It works for brain gym. I studied with a Dr. Ball, who was an expert in behavioral optometry. That's how I found out about it. And he worked for the military, like in the Danny DeVito movie, where he taught the, the guys who fell behind. But he didn't teach them knowledge. He just did eye tests. They all became expert. Uh, they all passed and went back into the military. So he was an expert in behavioral optometry, and he was my teacher. So I had a direct teacher, not a book out of it. Wow. Um, then a qu question for me, uh, should have asked this earlier, but um, watching the sunset and sunrise, you've probably seen kind of the circadian, you know, movement over the years. And 
there's some people that are so militant about it. Like, you you know, you should never miss a sunrise <laughs> and, or the sunset. You know, every day, that's the most important aspect of health. What are your, your thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, overdone. But it does help. If you have an opportunity to do it, it's good to watch the sunrise and the sunset because it does help tune you in. Usually, you can just go out and not even see the sun, but look the other way. And the body will uh, knows what your time is from the light in the same way that a bee uses the angle of the light to determine how to get back to its nest. You can change the light and confuse a bee where it can't do that anymore. They proved that it was bees. Same with uh, birds. They also use magnets, so they have other ways, but that electricity is hooked into the earth. So bees use magnets and light, and so do birds to migrate. I mean, how does a baby bird know how to get back to where they uh, where they migrated from 2,000 miles away, or a whale, for instance, for the same instant? <laughs> Yeah, I I just learned that uh, uh I have a tortoise now. It came with the place. It's a little Russian tortoise. I, I think that's the 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 breed. And uh, mm-hmm. I just read they could see ultraviolet light. Uh, did you know that tortoises? <laughs> bees bees can too. Uh, it's interesting that uh, bee white is actually turquoise to us. Interesting colors because we tend to start at red and go through violet. They eliminate red and start at orange and go through. The only ones that see like we do are, I believe, a hummingbird because they go to a truly red flower. Not all flowers are really truly red. And uh, the butterfly. The butterfly sees red like us. So we have butterfly vision and uh, very few animals have it. They have off center. So what we see as white is completely different to them. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, we three cats running around here, and I, I often think how um, how wild it is that they can see so clearly in pitch black, right, with their night vision. They have particularly the outer part of the iris is where you see grays and darkness. So if you wish to increase your nighttime vision, you go wide. We usually use what's called predator vision. We focus on things. And actually, Dr. Bates improves people's eyes by using imagination of the focus. When people look at things, you don't look at a whole word, you look specifically into a letter and even parts of a letter and your vision automatically improves. But if you go wide with your vision, two things happen. You can see better in the dark and suddenly you go into a theta brainwave and the first time it happened to me, I sobbed for a half hour. I was out in the woods, taught to go out in the woods and meditate. And I discovered that. And ever since, I use that as a way to meditate. You can do it in a complicated room with things in it, but it's easier to stare at a tree in the woods that has no particular geometry. So you have an entire field of uh, really Taoistic type of a design. And then, woof, you go into it and suddenly you're out of that vision. Wow. Interesting. Huh. Um, Many Many teachers know about that. I took a workshop. A girlfriend talked me into going to study with a, a rabbi uh, for a, a silent workshop. So, to, so I we got there, and I we there were some beautiful trees. So I said I taught her that technique. I said, "Isn't that interesting?" So I go and I brought a library book. My car was overheating. We're out in the desert in Tucson. And uh, I'm reading the library book and I get to the part about that type of vision. I say, wow, what a coincidence. I got to go tell my girlfriend. So I go and I realize I'm late for the first lecture. We weren't supposed to talk, but the teacher would tell us, the rabbi would tell us things. So I get ushered in and you have a front row seat. I get there and here's what he says. I don't tell you to do this for sure, but I want you to not use predator vision for this entire weekend workshop. I want you to go wide and see what the effect is. (laughs) And so, wow, that's right up my alley. (laughs) Yeah, it's a very unusual uh, effect when you get it. It's uh, very emotional and it's it's totally soporific. You relax immediately and everything is all right in the world with because it's a theta brainwave, which they of course use a lot for you have machines to generate it, but we can regenerate it 
easily in the woods. <laughs> wow. Is that uh, like, what about looking like into the distance, like on a mountain range, like, a, like really far away? Does that have kind of a similar calming? If you can get by the geometry, see hmm. with leaves, you can't make it into anything except with your imagination. You know, oh, that looks like a man and the moon. And that looks like this kind of thing. Uh, so you can do it. I've done it. It's harder to do. It's, it's easier to see what it is to do it in uh around a tree first after mm -hmm. that you can practice just going wide and you can do it even with complicated stuff all around but wow. first you start with a pattern that doesn't make sense that you can't make into a train or a mountain or a tree or you know you're you're looking at the tree so close you can't see its entire shape that's how it first happened to me and i figured that out that's really cool mm -hmm. um this is a great question what color makes you the strongest red oh. if you don't now it, even in the joe weeder magazines they advise you to use red and play heavy metal it's no accident heavy metal is heavy metal heavy metal is not to relax to <laughs> that's for like uh elevator music but heavy metal you does make you stronger and the color red makes you stronger. And even Joe Weider knew that. I found it in the, in his magazines after I'd already been studying color therapy. So yes, red, if you don't have a trauma with it, makes you stronger. Red light, red walls, red gym outfit. Yes. <laughs> wow. Um, can color therapy help with migraines? Oh yeah. Easily. <laughs> uh, Let's see, you would have to find out what color was the trauma and then you overcome the trauma because the migraine can be associated with different levels. But remember, it's also by pressing the back of the head and uh, you're probably better off to begin by holding your hands in cold water can make it go away. Wow. Interesting. Um, uh, so I don't think we, we talked about it yet, but in uh, previous shows, uh, you talk about wearing different colors on different days. So like Roy G. Biv starting on Monday, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, Monday, you start with red. And then it, I don't do this all the time, but it is better. And your things seem to flow better when you do it. So red is Monday. Tuesday is orange. Uh, yellow is Wednesday. Green is Thursday. Blue is Friday. Violet, indigo, and black are Friday, and white is Sunday, and then you start with red. And when you have shades like pink, it would be obviously better to do uh, Sunday evening if you really wanted to follow this. And black is better for Saturday night as a power company. It, it's a power uh, color. One time, there was some kind of divide in Adonis Lay's students. So we were on one side and Adonis said, everybody wear black. It was Saturday night. We're going to show up at this person's workshop. Everyone wearing black, black pants, black shirt, whatever you got black. So the black crew showed up to express the power. Uh, business people know to wear black or dark blue as power colors. <laughs> wow. And someone asked, does it matter the article of clothing? Like what if you just wear underwear and that's the only thing that's with the day. <laughs> There's two ways of looking at that. Uh, I tend to do the entire color so underwear can do it. it that's a common question, by the way. I've heard mm -hmm. that a lot. Uh, the way that Adonis Lay taught us to do it, if you want to go all the way, and I had a friend of mine named Thaddeus Hedges that did that, you wear red shirt, green pants, orange shirt, blue pants, uh, yellow shirt, violet pants, green shirt, uh, you get the idea. You wow. reverse the bottom below the belt because there is a difference below the belt. Gold is wearable above the heart, but brass should be below or you interrupt your flow. And the same thing with colors. But I usually just go for the one color and, and don't go that much as my friend. My friend did it. He was he had a in Monday, red hat, red socks, red pants, red shirt. <laughs> no, no, uh, 
yeah, it, he did it both ways. He did the opposite at the bottom, but many days he was completely red, completely <laughs> orange, completely. <laughs> he even lived wow. in a house mm -hmm. that he painted each room a color that would like wow. yellow in the kitchen, make your appetite, yellow plastic over the windows to make it yellow, the bedroom a certain color, and he had all these different colors in the house. Wow. I bet he turned some heads. When I when I wear different colored pants, I get compliments and people are like, I like your pants. And it, it seems like it could change people's day, right? To kind of break the monotony of like jeans or whatever. <laughs> it does. I have uh I have uh yoga pants that were custom made by a friend of mine that are paisley and they're all kinds of different colors. And uh I hooked up with a uh a woman one time. We were platonic friends and we traveled. She said she wanted to be my clothing advisor because those are clown plants and <laughs> they don't fit they <laughs> she wanted me to dress more like a jazz guy with one of those hats you pull and an earring and all that kind of stuff but it's just not my personality <laughs> <laughs> i think it might do you have a picture in your website with those pants i feel like i saw yeah i do oh. i do with okay. with uh, with a gebby uh yeah. gebby is a good friend of mine he's a uh Olympic uh, champion and a really good guy. Into we're both into Sai Baba, who is was quite quite a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I think I talked with him when I was in my heavy uh, uh, kind of Christian phase, and it was it was funny because we kind of butted heads. So I've, I've <laughs> known him for years. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. I, I mean, he he visited us one time. We stayed up all night and talked all night. We had so many stories to share, and he's had. He's had some amazing stories to, to share, too. <laughs> wow. Um, well, we have a lot of like unrelated to color questions. Do you want to jump into some of yeah, those? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> sure. Um, and he mounted his horse and rode off in all directions <laughs> is my middle name. <laughs> we went about, I think, about an hour and a half on colors. So pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We, we have it covered. And I'll send you some more information on those uh, on those books and things. And, and we'll... We yeah, definitely oh, will keep in touch. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember the name, uh, Lieberman. That's the author. Do you know that? Yeah, author? Lieberman. He's a, a friend of mine threw her glasses away doing that color therapy. And I've done Lieberman's therapy, especially I liked his old projector setup. We now on our SunSync site have a setup like that where you can watch through those colors and videos. Lieberman didn't have black and gray and brown. He started from red to violet. We... uh my friend uh, Guru and uh, 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 <laughs> I can't even pronounce his name now. Uh, we set up a deal where we could use that. Hmm. Interesting. Um, maybe last question for me. Like I'm setting up, uh, since there's so many people in this area, the Pacific, you know, Southwest. Like uh, I'm setting up an in-person uh, recording studio for shows. <laughs> what What would you recommend I paint the walls for the studio? Uh, let's right see. Right now, because right now it's white. I don't know if that's good or white is pretty good. It's completion. Okay. Um, okay. If you want, uh, uh, it depends on what you want to reach. Pastel colors are usually the better, and then I might even do some do some muscle testing because the color will affect how you work. So what color tests best? You can have someone easily test you for that and then do it a few times to make sure it's it's sticking, that it's a day-to-day -day thing. Certain times a day, especially the time you do the show, and then usually pick up a pastel, a pastel color is better. Okay. I guess that could yeah. be a problem if the guest has a trauma with the color that I choose, right? <laughs> yeah, and then, then you're not responsible, but it can happen. Now, for colonics and for grounding, Adano always recommended a brown carpet because it's like grounding. And grounding is very important. I studied with a Tai Chi teacher named Master Chen who said the trouble with Tai Chi, they're dancing. They're not grounding. You have to ground at least 50 feet into the earth before you're really doing Tai Chi. And so brown is a grounding color. It's also a good color for colonic rooms that paint them entirely brown. <laughs> and, uh, and grounding, see, attachment is brown, but the only attachment we're allowed is the sperm and the ovum. Everything else will eventually be taken. We're renting things. We don't own anything, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're renting here. But our 
our head is always going to be attached to the rest of our body. Otherwise, we're the headless horse man. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked thoughts on hemochromatosis. I think because I just posted a show on this and I interviewed a doctor and she was talking about um, that being higher in northern northern European populations, like especially Ireland because of famines and losing blood in battle. And it was like an adaptation to like hold on to iron. Um, any thoughts on all that? Or? Uh, it can happen. Uh, you don't really need to do, well, sometimes if you have a serious case of it, then you do have to do blood draining. And there's two ways to get it. One is a genetic alteration. I, actually, I prefer to say hereditary because they want to stop you at the genes. And hereditary isn't all about the genes because there's proteonomics, glyconomics, all these other biomes that we don't hear about. But it is hereditary. Then there's a type from just using too much iron. And here at one time, we had an epidemic of cancer uh, in the 70s and 80s when everybody was taking an iron supplement and then they took a multivitamin that had iron in it, and then their protein powder had iron and their wonder bread had iron in it and everything had iron in it it is not uh, it, it stimulates lipofuscin it stimulates oxidation of free radicals of all kinds and you want to keep your iron to a minimum you don't want to do what women did at one time to look pale they actually bled themselves including uh, Alexander III's wife, Dagmar, Queen Dagmar, mm -hmm. she actually would bleed herself because it was hip to look pale. Wow. <laughs> That's a bit too much. <laughs> you can lose too much iron. <laughs> Interesting. Well, speaking of lipofuscin, I, uh, every once in a while, I'll do a little Google search, you know, just with I won't go in the back door like you talk about and just put in lipofuscin and just see what comes up. And there was an article um, by Yale University, quantum chemistry protects against age-related macular degeneration. And then they go to um, to talk about how um, melanin, remo uh, yeah, melanin removes lipofuscin via like this quantum chemistry. It's, it's kind of interesting that it's that it made the news, you know? <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thing that the universe could not run without melanin. Melanin is just not a photochemical. If you see a brown tree, that's melanin. If you see a brown bison, that's melanin. If you see a pink flamingo, it's a type of melanin. Gray hair is melanin. Everything you see in a the color, there is melanin involved. There is no creature on Earth, and it's even floating around in space. So melanin is necessary for light because of racial prejudice that got, oh, it's the color of the sun, how it's done it. That is not true at all. It You can generate melanin. If you want more melanin, rub your hand and eventually you'll tan. That's why. How did the Eskimos get tanned? What the heck happened? <laughs> They're not exposed to the sun. I mean, maybe the, maybe the sun reflecting over the sun, the snow. But how often does that happen? Uh, yeah, you can uh, you can tan in other ways. You can tan in various ways by different types of forces, sonics, friction, heat, etc. It's a very strong force, and melanin keeps us from getting cancer by stepping down an ultraviolet radiation to an infrared radiation. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that you can shine light through your hand, it's red. If it was orange, you'd be dead. If it was yellow, you'd be dead. Red is the step down color so that then our body can take it into darkness at that point and recreate all the colors of the rainbow and pigments we want out of the original red. But we can't take it directly. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, uh, someone asked, have you changed your mind about anything regarding the aging process? Um, you know, the aging process, I pretty well still go with uh, Aubrey de Grey's idea. Life of Fuskin is involved in two and one quarter of the aging processes. Uh, it's involved in lipofuscin in the mitochondria, mitofuscin in the interstitial fluid, and or outside the cell, 
And it's also involved in what we call ages, which is advanced uh, glycation aging process products. Those are actually blamed on sugar, but more so it's proteins and omega-3 fatty acids than it is, particularly proteins. One is surprising. Manuka honey has something that is 40,000 times more aging than sugar. <laughs> Aubrey de Grey recognizes that too much sugar can actually age you, but to, since it's also essential for life, Genetically altering that would be very dangerous. So he wants to take the methylgloxal, which is in the process in Manuka honey. Now, should I not take Manuka honey? If you have an infection, yes, because all medications are like homeopathic. You poison to oppose a poison. But it, as a honey for taking it on a daily basis, I wouldn't be doing it. It's aging. But remember, the other aging processes are uh, two little cells. It's called wasting away, uh, wasting syndrome. You start to lose muscle mass when you age. The other one is too many cells. That's called cancer and other tumors and things of that nature. Then you have actual genetics. And I prefer heredity because it's not just all the DNA, but it does work on hereditary. And then you have uh, mitochondrial uh, heredity which usually comes from the mother where you get those cells. So you really have to address all of those. It's not as simple as you're going to just get rid of lipofuscin and you're going to live forever. It takes a dedication and uh, you can tie all those together by passion. Look at Charlie Munger. He loves doing what he's doing. He may be a villain, but he's 99 years old and he's eating junk food. Warren Buffett is 92. He gets all he gets quarter of his calories from high fructose corn syrup. Dick Van Dyke is 97, still doing the soft shoe. He eats pretty well, but he's a chain smoker and he was an alcoholic most of his life. So how are these guys? They love life. And that's the real secret. Whether you have money or don't have money, whether you're a beach bum or not, or you're in here we have maids and butlers who are lifelong friends with their their people who employ them. They don't have to worry about deadlines like we do. Think of the word deadlines. I got to pay, do my driver's license. I got my small dick. I got all of that. Their life is taking care of them. They live into their hundreds and they get and, and a lot of times the owners here will give them their house and they don't even want it. They donate it to someone else and go live with their relatives because they got enough to survive on. So passion is one of the major things, I think, for uh, a, people who are passionate about their life, whether you're a scientist or a billionaire or a beach bum, they're the people who live long. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I, I love it. And and um, and yeah, with, with lipofuscin, is, what's the light relationship? Because I know it's excited by UV and blue light, and then it emits yellow and red. Can we use things like, I thought I read once, like red and orange light helps to protect against it? Or? Yeah, red light can protect it. And by the way, uh, I, I'm not a Jack Cruz fan, but let me say something in his defense here. Uh, many people say because he has lipofuscin all over his face that obviously his diet is wrong. But no, he just overexposes himself to his son. His liver might not have any lipofuscin at all. We don't know for sure without going internally because lipofuscin appears not only with what you eat, but what you where you damage yourself. And if you're getting too much sun exposure, I'm sorry for people who say I'm going to be a, in the sun as long as I want. They tend to get cataracts. They get, uh, what do they call these butterfly things that surfers get? They get those things unless they protect themselves and really know what they're doing. So, uh, uh, in defense of Jack Cruz, he may have a perfectly healthy heart and liver. <laughs> mm -hmm. He does eat a lot of seafood, though. I think it's predominantly seafood. Yep. So <laughs> it, it can be because too much seafood. Now, if you eat the codfish and avoid the liver, no problem because it's a dry fish. You could probably get away with eating that for years and not have any problem. You could get you get omega threes out of butter. You can get it out of palm oil, and there's even a tiny bit in coconut oil, which is probably the less. Olive oil, according to Ray Pete, can have 10% omega-3s, but guess what? I happen to know from reading old agricultural uh, journals that some olives have 
49 percent of making threes. That's more than a, more than a salmon, for God's sake. So you better know your uh, the higher the olive trees grow the more omega-3s because it's cooler temperature. So if you get a coastal one, you're likely to have less because you could have quite a bit less. And almonds don't have any at all. It's the only nut I know of that almost has, they say, some accounts say none. I, I find that hard to believe, but they have negligible amounts. And I'm not too scared of omega-6s because I can't write a single book about it. I could write a 15th and 16th book on uh, <laughs> omega-3s. But uh, again, aging is an omega-3 process. You're not going to get away from it. Until you give up plants and animal life entirely, you're going to age. So you can get go too far about it. If, if I went out for dinner, someone served me a salmon steak, I'd eat it. Case closed. <laughs> Did you hear about the the biohacker? Is it Brian Johnson, the guy that I think is in L.A. He's spending like millions of dollars. He's like the ex, you know, tech billionaire or whatever, and he's doing all the biohacking things. And I think he's I think he's completely vegan, but he's taking a ton of supplements and gets like fifty or sixty a day or something. <laughs> that usually doesn't work very well. It didn't work well for what is the guy who what led the team inside the biosphere? Uh, oh, yeah. He took a ton and he died of a disease that's associated with yellow fat disease. I forget the exact muscular disease. It's common to get. Now, some people get away with it. Ray Kurzweil is still alive, surprisingly, and he has taken as much as 250 supplements a day. So... You know, I, I, people do it. Now, here's a guy, the crime boss, Sonny Francesi, uh, was 50 years in prison, existing on prison food. He lived uh, 103, 104, but he took a lot of supplements when he was out of it. But he went 50 years without supplements, living on prison food. And he just, when they put him in prison, he said, I'll, I'll outlive it. I'll be there. I'll be out. He, he just knew he was going to last that long. And this was a, a homicidal maniac. He killed over 50 people and cut them up and put them down the drain. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I guess he had a passion for life, but, uh, you know, that makes me nervous being around friends like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, one of my friends visited, I'm trying to see the name. I think it was cry, uh, the cryo where they freeze you. Like it's like an insurance thing with your life insurance. And they're in, I believe they're actually in Arizona. Have you seen that? Where if you're right near where I used to live, yeah, I'm really? familiar with that group. They put out Life Extension magazine, and uh, they're into biotech. Aubrey de Grey is on the staff, and they have a whole bunch of other people. Uh, I'm not a fan of those people, but they're uh, at least they're working on Life Extension. I think they're going in the wrong places. By even Aubrey de Grey, uh, Aubrey de Grey is. He understands aging more than anyone else on the planet right now. Now they're getting him for groping some women or something like that. So he's on a uh, bad list. But he wants to cure it all GMO. That's his idea. And that's where I get off board on that. I mean, there have been yogis that have lived for uh, the the Shiva Pira Baba lived uh, 139, didn't start smoking cigarettes. So he was 130. <laughs> So, wow. <laughs> so, and uh, Master Chen's uh, master, who was a woman, lived to uh, 125. So, wow. And then there's and, the, the Li Ching Wen, right? The 256 year old guy. I can't validate that, but I've heard that, that there are many cases of people. Some guy in England lived 150, and when they took him out of his environment to court, he died from eating their food or whatever. So, oh. uh, But I think there, I think people do live above 126, which is supposed to be the maximum now. I, I really do. There's too much evidence. I've read a, I, I read a lot of things in libraries of books that are not available anymore. And there's just too many examples. One woman started having children at 100. So how do we explain that? And we're told if you read in the medical literature, women stop their period at 56 or 57 will be the record, some people say. I had a girlfriend was having it in her uh, late 60s and 70s. And, and and there are cases of periods being done in, uh, uh, in the hundreds 
and more that people have had childbirth then. And by the way, you can women can have their p- period through their ears, their nose, their knees, their feet, and other places. And there are many cases. I, I particularly am interested in those strange medical cases, so I collect those. And they're they're validated by uh, uh, doctors that these things happen. Our science doesn't want to admit any of that stuff. We don't want to know about Mr. Eatsall, who ate a Cessna. Took him two years. He eats bicycles, coffins, shopping carts, televisions, chandeliers, razor blades. How, and he digests them. How does he digest them? There's people say, oh, unless it's in a plant, you can't digest it. You can't take an inorganic mineral. How is he doing it? An entire Cessna took him two years. Wow. Yeah, talk about heavy metal poisoning, right? I know, I know. (laughs) Yeah. Now, he died at 59 from a knife wound, I heard. My question, was it inside or outside? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Um, someone asked, best and easiest way to maintain a delta state while going about your day? Concentrate on the center of your forehead, usually. Being very careful when you drive and operate heavy-duty machinery or whatever. Uh, but if you start to concentrate on that area and sometimes attempt to concentrate on your belly button and the center of your forehead, you can bring that about as one way. Uh, also, sometimes doing a mantra will do that. We, if you just attempt to repeat it as many times as you can and come back to that one word, and it can be any word, Coca-Cola, whatever. I, I think there are words that are more powerful. And uh, I really think some words out of uh, Sant Mat, out of Yogi, Om Mani Padme Hum, Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. There's all these different mantras that uh, have worked for me before. And I've had I've had phenomenal results with some of those mantras, by the way, oh. including change. Nam Yoho Renge Kyo is kind of from a fanatical group, if you're familiar with them. That thing brought me all kinds of money and things though when I did it. Wow. wow. Probably don't want to use like cuss words, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe cuss word. That would be interesting. I think I tried that one day for a meditation. <laughs> I think I was in an ornery mood. <laughs> um, tips on insomnia, specifically postpartum hormone related. You know, usually it's a trauma behind it. If you can, uh, and one way to adjust the, the hormones is from the hour, sometime between the hours of 10 to 10, 10 at night to 10 in the morning, bag breathes. It, mm-hmm. Carbon dioxide is a relaxant, a soporific, and nitric oxide causes problems, but carbon dioxide will replace that. And it can cure a variety of things, including inflammatory things. And uh, and so that's one way. Also, find out what the trauma is. People don't if people have no traumas, they go right to sleep. They don't have a problem with that. They're knocked out like that. I I now am doing pretty well because I put my head down. I'm asleep. Even if I'm listening to something on YouTube, I'm gone in five minutes or less. When But when I have insomnia, because we're designed not to work for the man, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. Uh, if I wake up with insomnia at two in the morning, I'm on the internet for a few hours. <laughs> oh, I feel sleepy, back to sleep. If I don't go to sleep, I get up another hour. And usually I have no problem. I used to have a problem with jobs I hated the night before. I never could go to sleep because I hated the job. <laughs> <laughs> so look into Did- your environment usually and who's the matter with you and what's going on. Not that hormones aren't involved. In fact, progesterone, I take progeste, and mm. sometimes I even take thyroid, you know, either uh, usually I take the, uh, uh, which one is it, the, the cytomel, which is a, a synthetic one, and I scrape off tiny bits if I feel really low one day and I need to have some energy. And the Cyta Plus, I haven't used much yet. It has T3 and T4. Many women, because of estrogen and omega-3s, they can't convert T4 to T3. So then it makes it worse. It makes the thyroid worse. And iodine isn't going to improve your thyroid unless you live in a high mountaintop and do not have access to any processed food or live near the beach. 
or live even in California, right up into Death Valley, probably. Interesting. Yeah, I've taken both of those, Adam. And it's it's interesting with the hormone supplementation because a lot of people argue it'll shut down your own endogenous production, but it, it could actually be the opposite, right? A lot of these will increase your endogenous production. There, There's some truth to it shutting it down. But as a booster charge, it's a different thing. Again, it's something like uh, constant color will shut the mechanism down. Constant grandfather clock. It's not a threat, so we just eliminate it entirely. Two types of meditation, by the way. If you do a Zen meditation, you hear the clock the entire hour. If you do a transcendental meditation, you don't hear the clock the entire hour. <laughs> so so it's different states of mind that we have and can use to our advantage. Most people can't do that. So five minutes on, five minutes on of a cold, hot therapy, of a blue, red therapy, whatever they want to do. Uh, alternating colors makes a difference. Mm. Um, kind of random question. Uh my, my friend just started doing uh, Qigong and we were out for sushi last week and he pulls up the video that they play during the class and it's a guy in a white robe, you know, with <laughs> like palm trees behind. And I said, wait a minute, that's the same video that I did like 10 years ago. So you must be taking the same um, <laughs> the same Qigong class. But what what are your thoughts on, on that? Is it useful or? Yes. Yeah. Uh... Studying with Master Chen and meeting him by accident, I moved to a ranch in Texas, and he, the owner of the ranch, who was a friend of mine, I was going to be the watchman on this 640-acre uh, ranch, he decided to do his Tai Chi workshops there. So uh, Chen became quite a teacher for me, and I got to take his nine his nine day workshops for free. <laughs> they were you paying four thousand dollars for these and bringing people from all over the country and sometimes other countries. Well, he taught me that in Qigong it works on the twelve acupuncture meridians, so it's for your health. For Tai Chi, it's for spiritual growth, and that involves the eight extraordinary meridians, including the conception meridian in the front, the brain governing in the back. That's what green pillowcases and violet is about, although I learned that from a different source. So he actually could ground and do a one-inch punch that could knock people 40 feet, but he didn't do it because it would kill the person. <laughs> he had a teacher that could do that same thing without killing a person, but he said he wasn't at that level yet. And he was ignored. He was he was a bit irked by people who studied with him and then called themselves master some. He said, I'm called a master, but I'm not a complete master yet either. So, <laughs> so he stopped calling himself Master Chen and called himself Wu Dang Chen now. But to me, he's Master Wu Dang Chen because the guy is amazing. He could read my mind. Uh, I'll give you an, one quick example. Uh, Adonal Lay showed me a design, a figure eight around the waist of a yogi. And I said, what's that? He said, that's something martial arts use. I couldn't get a word out of him. So I, of course, became obsessed with it, looking enteric nervous system. What is this? And I'm studying everything. Uh, I'm taking Master Chen's class, and suddenly I realize he's drawing that design. And suddenly he looks at me and says, ah, Adam's been waiting for this information for 30 years. And I said, yeah, 1987 to 2007, exactly 30 years. <laughs> and he said, funny, I haven't taught this for 30 years. And uh, now I'm teaching it again. And then he went on. Two days later, I'm taking a shower and I realized he was 10 years old 30 years ago. And his master set him with summer clothes to walk through the snow of three Chinese provinces and survive. And an egg saved his life, just like it saved the Donald Lay's life, because someone gave him an egg to keep him starving at one time. Wow. He's lived a life right out of the, what is that 
arrows movie that you know the, the martial arts movies they have with all the arrows and all that kind of stuff that got popular about that time and in one of the latest uh karate kid movies they use wudang monastery with all the steps going up there and the mar- those are students of wudang chen so wow. it's real stuff it's very powerful and he uh can read minds easily read mine easily on several other occasions i just give you one example wow can he can he read like what color you're thinking of yeah I, he doesn't show off like that he does it in surprising ways like it, 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 i'll give you another example that we may not be located to our body like we think so he says he's frustrated because he his most advanced uh martial arts student cannot astral project further than 15 feet he said, I can't do a thing with them. But one time we're doing karate out. I mean, we're doing a Tai Chi out on the tennis court of this place, which is all run down tennis court, not usable. And we're doing it and a plane fly flew over. I felt Chen connect with that plane directly. And I thought, what was that about? So we go back into the house and we're doing classes. And he said, yeah, you know what happened to me out there? I suddenly found myself in a jet that flew overhead talking to a lady, telling her not to worry because she's afraid of flights. I said, what else can happen? You know, so if the plane flies, what can you do about it? And I thought, I felt that. Now, did he read my mind? Did he really do that? He claimed he could teach classes in two different locations. So I don't know. He's right out of one of those. uh, I I wish I could think of that martial arts movie that was so popular. Back in the 2000, I think it was. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. Is that where at the end there's like hundreds of arrows flying? Yes, and, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and they're floating through the air and all that kind of stuff. He was, he was a, uh, a hero. psychic. Isn't it called hero? It... Yeah, something okay. like that. I think it had a tiger. Crouching oh, tiger. crouching tiger, hidden dragon. That's okay. the one. Okay, yeah. I was I was thinking a hero, which is different. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but heroes has the same type of thing. But it was the original one. I think was the crouching tiger movie. Uh, and uh, anyway, he's lived a life right out of that. From the time he was a psychic as a kid, and he was raised by Christian parents, and uh, his teacher, the woman, sent his other teacher. 2,000 miles away to go get her uh, successor. So he walks up and he's doing Tai Chi and Chen sees him doing it and he's moving the tree leaves in the distance and doing stuff like that. And so he got interested. He said, well, you've been selected. So he talked to his parents into going and they they walk mostly the 2,000 miles back to Wudang Monastery where he trained till he was 16, from 6 to 16 for 10 years. Every day they had to hit trees till their hands were bleeding and do all kinds of things. And under Chinese communism, they had to do it at night. They had to go out into the forest and do all that stuff you see in the movie because you could be killed for doing that. In fact, his teacher was totally maimed by the communists when they tried to drag her away and she kept crawling back and they kept beating her up till she was crippled. And finally, they had mercy on her and said, just leave her alone. And so she lived uh, 125 years old. Wow. Yeah, the, 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 the type of Qigong I was doing, have you heard of Falun Dafa? Adam, uh, I've heard those names, and and because I'm not really a martial artist, I I went through the movements, but I didn't know what I was doing. I followed everybody else and mimicked them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, supposedly they like in China they harvest the organs of of people like, like oh that group that yeah the right, Long yep. Gong yes yep. mm-hmm. yep. they Epic Times is one of the most interesting news organizations, but that can be a dangerous organization. They're really kind of kooky. They believe one guy is God, and there are people who have escaped their clutches. Kind of like there's good things about Scientology. There's good things about some of these organizations, but there are other sides of it. But they're Epic Times. I'm a big fan of They That's one thing they did right. Their news is uh, alternate from what we get today. And uh, there are a lot of uh, repressive things going on in China, just to say, really repressive things. Yeah, I, I think the, the the story was that they're like, 
these people are building up their energy and making their organs and glands super healthy. And then like these, you know, rich politicians or whatever are taking them for themselves. I've done their exercises on a weekly oh, wow. basis one time. Wow. And I had a girlfriend in Sedona. Of course, it had to be <laughs> Sedona. And they have a big, used to have a big temple there. So she got into it. Uh, we would go for some other metaphysical stuff. But every week, we would have dinner with a friend, watch Dar Dancing with the Stars after doing all these exercises. So I'd go in and I actually learned that pizza one, you know. <laughs> now I <laughs> couldn't do it. But yeah, it was a combination of some yoga, some Tai Chi, some of these very interesting exercises. I I enjoyed them. Yeah, I think I did it for like uh, six months or something. And I, I felt wow. great. <laughs> I only... Three months, I think. I broke up. I, I don't do relationships too well until I met Byron Gal. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, well, Adam, this was awesome. I think we're uh, right on time here. And uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, this was, was overdue. I appreciate you coming on again to talk about color. I can't believe we haven't done it. I mean, there's bits and pieces in our, our previous shows, but uh, to have a whole show on it, I think it's really great. good. And it's very helpful for people, too. I mean, it's... I think so. I think it's one of the most powerful color uh, therapies out there it, among all the kinds of sonic therapies and other therapies, uh, various forms of it. And if I have time to finish, I'll tell you something that you're in an area where there's a lot of important people and you might want to follow this up. I'm going to give you the history of medicine. Dr. Emmanuel Ravisi in all of his books, I found one paragraph that blew my mind. He took a deadly cancer drug that gives you cancer 100%. There's no, no escape. And he gave mice that. This drug had a Franzhauser lines, a spectral releasing patterns, not just an overall color, but the exact lines and dark spots and everything. He reasoned that if he could find the color that accepted that, he could lock it up and imprison it where it couldn't give you cancer. So he found it was one in the car carotenoid family, and he matched it. And now only 25% of the mice injected with the chemical died. That's the future of me medicine. It takes Gaudioli to the Franzhauser line's exact patterns of how they work but nobody's doing it nobody's got money but eventually i predict they're going to realize if they really want to heal people that's going to be a very important step for us right out of star trek medicine that's incredible yeah I, I, i'm kind of happy to be back in california uh to, to be closer to uh, to to uh a lot of interesting things like there's this uh this egg device that you can sit in, like basically a light and sound machine, but supposedly people have, you know, miraculous results. And I wonder how much of it is just being in a chamber filled with different colors at different frequencies. It can make a difference. Uh, and you've got the Scripps Institute. You've got a lot of high tech research going down there. And a lot of it is uh, ESP type research, too. Uh, so it's it's a. Uh, it's an important area for not only biotech and things like that, but for some of the other research. I believe, uh, what did you call it? The, uh, the sonic devices uh, put out by some organization. I've even forgotten the name, BioLink or BioNeuronics or something like that. <laughs> they had all kinds of uh, scientific things. And even the branch of Theosophy had a temple down there. There's a lot of metaphysics and a lot of scientific metaphysics and a lot of regular science. So there are certainly interesting people down in the San Diego area. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm closer to the the, the centenarian area. Is it Loma Linda, right? Yeah. Loma Linda, too. <laughs> you bet. You bet. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. I, I miss aspects of Idaho. I mean, there's, I think there's pluses and minuses, but it's just, it's so hard being off grid and it's even harder being away from family. That's probably the hardest thing. So, yeah, that is hard because that network connection is important too, you know? So, yeah. Well, well welcome back to California. Anyway. Glad, <laughs> glad you're back. Appreciate it. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll run into you, into you one of these days. And <laughs> could be, could be. <laughs> well, uh, Thanks so much, Adam. Uh, stick around as we cl oh, close out the show. Oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll, I record separately, but solartiming.com. Um, definitely check out Adam's 
uh, book and uh, uh, color recycling. Do you still have the YouTube video on your website? The uh, yeah, we 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 sell that, and I we probably have a a couple of videos to see on the website as well, and. Oh. You can put me in on YouTube and find some of those old reflex videos and various things that we were doing at one time. Uh, and of course, shows. There's a lot of shows. A lot of times I go and find out, I didn't know that was on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite shows are the ones uh, you did with uh, Justin, uh, Extreme Health Radio. Those are great. I've even, enjoyed even the, doing. Even the shows. old ones are great, like five years ago. Or... <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. I've been doing shows for a long time. <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, appreciate you, Adam, and uh, stick around as we close out the show. Thanks so much. Will do. I always have so much fun speaking with Adam Bergstrom, and I'm still surprised this is our first show we've ever done on color therapy. As Adam mentioned, he wrote a great ebook on color therapy called Color Recycling a prismer of the hues and who's. If you want to do a deep dive into each color, I think this is a great resource. He goes down the list of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, and talks about the minerals and elements attached to each color. So, for example, red is associated with antimony, cadmium, cobalt, gallium, hydrogen, krypton, manganese, neon, potassium, radon, and yttrium. So wearing the right colors on the right day or the glasses at the specific times can actually help with the utilization and the building of those minerals. So if you want to check out Adam's other eBooks, you can go to solartiming.com and then click the store tab. And then you can click Adam's eBooks or Adam's mini ebooks. And he has a lot of great material there to dive into. Adam also has the website sunsinknutrition.com if you want to dive into solar eating. There's a $100 lifetime fee, and you gain access to recipes and a list of all of the foods to eat at the different times of day. And I had a lot of fun playing around with that. I really like how Adam is a fan of nuts specifically, like almonds, pistachios, walnuts, cashews. I ate a lot of those when I was raw vegan. And actually, when I worked as a raw vegan chef at a cafe, I would make huge cashew cheesecakes for people. It could definitely be overdone, but I don't think that's what Adam is talking about. He's talking about small, consistent doses of almonds, cashews, pistachios, whatever you're into. I feel like it works really well with my digestion. Even nut butters I started getting back into and just small amounts, not going crazy and eating half a jar, the entire jar. And I find it actually benefits my digestive health. So much more to come with Adam on Mito Life Radio. I really appreciate him and all of the great information that he's putting out there. He's a true researcher and I just love his passion for human health. My website is matt-blackburn.com. You could read about my CLF protocol, calcification, lipofuscin, and fibrosis. And I go into the nuances of each of those, how calcification can be caused by both excess vitamin D poisoning or overload and also vitamin D deficiency. And it's been really fun for me over the last several years to go down these rabbit holes and come back to balance and realize that too much or too little of something, whether it's iron or calcium or vitamin D, can cause issues. If you click on the shop tab, you can see all of my recommended products. I recently added a natural fertilizer up there called Omica Grow. And this is something that I used up in Idaho last summer. And I noticed really quick growth in a lot of my plants and trees. If all goes well, by the end of this month, I'll finally have my growing spaces 33-foot geodesic growing dome 
up and running down here in California, actually brought that down on a Penske moving truck. When all said and done, it's definitely a lot more expensive than a traditional greenhouse, but I'm going to have a lot of fun playing around with using the nitrates from the fish pond that's going in there, having a nice little picnic table to have tea and relax in there, and maybe even grow some tropical fruits. So if you want to check them out, they are growing spaces. I did a lot of research before purchasing a geodesic dome kit. You still need to hire builders and you still need site prep and materials. And there's a ton of costs that go into it. But the value of growing your own food, fruits and vegetables is truly priceless. That is real wealth. My brand is MitoLife. You can find that at mitolife.co. We have three categories, living, water, and wellness. Under the living tab, we currently have grounding or earthing sheets. These are a great thing to have if you go camping or if you're just getting into optimizing your sleep and you want to start experimenting with improving your sleep quality, then sleeping on a grounding sheet especially rod to earth out your window is a really great way to go. Under the water tab, you can see our seven stage water solution. It's currently out of stock. Our next version is getting ready to launch here in a couple weeks. So keep an eye on that page if you've been waiting to purchase the best water filter on the market. And then under the wellness tab, you'll see 16 products. And it feels weird to say that because it seems like not long ago, I started MitoLife and started with Dissolve It All, Digest It All, Dairy Absorb, Probiotic, then moved into Vitamin K2, Vitamin E. I'm really proud of this lineup. I love all of the products here and I think they could all help so many people if they are used strategically. I actually had a friend that's on his third child with his wife and she's been taking my supplements. The beef liver, the zinc, the oyster, the vitamin E and K2. She's on cod liver oil for the other fat soluble vitamins. She's even taking Shilajit and I've met their two children and they're super bright eyed, super alert, seem like basically super babies. And they credit the MitoLife supplements largely for that. I also think they're just very special people. But I think that's where nutritional supplements really shine is whether a couple is preparing to have a child, which I think it's good to build up for at least a year or two and really build up your nutrient levels, or actually during the pregnancy process and the nursing process, I think nutritional supplements can play a huge role to improve the chances that you'll have a super vibrant child with minimal or no complications. So check out the MitoLife Academy on YouTube. It's $15 a month, and you get two private videos where I share new things that I'm researching and experimenting with. And then the last day of the month, there's a live Q&A where you could ask me anything. So I will see you guys next week. Stay supercharged. Mm -hmm.